Hello, it's Vivi Cameron and today I want to show you some basics of how to use this sewing machine. The first thing I do always is to connect the power cord first to the machine and then to the power supply. This applies with modern and old sewing machines. So I'm going to show you first some parts like this one here. This is the spool pin. You can just move it from side to side. This part here is the presser foot lifter. And this one is the light switch. I'm going to turn the machine to show you this part here. This is the stop motion knob. You have to turn this, this part here towards you and this action disengage the balance wheel from the chaff that operates the machine. When that piece is loose, the machine is not going to sew or the needle is not going to move. This part here is where you are going to select the length of your stitches from bottom holes, four for long stitches to one or zero. And this one here is where you are going to select the width of your stitches, which is zero for a straight stitch to five for a wide zigzag. And this one here is to select the position of your needle. If you want the needle to go to the left, in the center, or to the right. This part also is useful because you can move the needle in the position that is better for your work. Sometimes you want the needle to be in the edge of the fabric or in another place, so you can position in the needle in the place you need with this part here. Something very important in, when you are adjusting the width of your stitches is this part here. The name is width stoppers and they have to hold that lever in place. The lever should not move just like I'm showing here. For reverse feeding or back stitch you need to press this button and to go forward all you have to do is press it again. From this part here, you can set your machine according the materials you are going to work with, from silk to thicker fabrics. You will find the bobbin case in this part here, and all you have to do is disengage it to get it out and to insert the bobbin in it. But first, we need to wind the bobbin, so I'm going to show you how to do that. You are winding the bobbin, do not forget to disengage the stop motion knob. So this part here is not going to move and it's not going to break the needle or it's not going to damage the work you are doing in that moment. And as you see here, this machine is smooth, it doesn't make a big noise when it's doing this. Uh, and it's something very important I want to tell you, is my advice. Please pay attention to the details when you are using your sewing machine. It doesn't matter if it's a vintage sewing machine or if it's a modern sewing machine. What is important is that you learn to use whatever sewing machine you have. That's how you are going to succeed. That's how you are going to have a happy experience. So now I'm going to show you how to set the bobbin in the bobbin case. I just insert the bobbin and I guide the thread into the slot into the edge of the bobbin case and I'd pull it to the right under the tension spring and into its delivery eye. After doing this, a simple test you can make to see if you have doing this properly is just pulling with your hand the thread and the thread has to easily move. I'm making here a close-up so you can see 
where that thread is. And to put that bobbin case in place, you need to release this latch. You see the latch here, you need to move it towards you. And then you have to insert the bobbin case in that part underneath your machine. When the bobbin case is in proper position, you just press, press it back and the latch I showed you before, you just put it there, you press it back as well. If you don't do that, this part here is going to be like this, loose. So the machine is not going to work. This part has to be properly in place. Now I'm going to thread the machine. And more than talking step by step, I want you to see what I'm doing here. Every single sewing machine has a threading path or a threading road. I don't know how to say that. There are some pins up in the machine and you need to thread the thread through those parts. Then you have to go down to the tension part, which is this one, and you will find two discs in every single sewing machine. You will find two discs there and you need to insert the thread in the middle of those discs. In vintage sewing machine, there is an extra thing you have to do, which is pull the thread up until you get the thread engaged in this little flap there, this one here, that one there, the thread has to be there. And then you continue threading the machine, just as I'm doing here. But the thread has to be here in this way. Then you go up, you pass the thread in this part, and then you go ahead and you keep threading this machine as I'm doing here. If you have any question, you can consult your manual. In the manual, there is a guide to show you how to do this. So every little hook there or next to the needle is to help the thread to go in the right position. The last thing you do is threading the needle. I'm going to try to show you here those little hooks that this machine has. I'm going to open this, this part here so you can see, I hope you can see the little hook there. All you have to do is to pull the thread to get inside that hook and you will be done. Now I'm going to thread the needle. This needle goes, has the hole facing to a side, so you're going to thread the needle from the left to the right, just like I'm doing here, and we are done with the threading. This is a very easy and quick operation once you know how to do it properly. Well, something I want to tell you here is this part, you can open this part here to apply oil or to change the bulb. The bulb is there and you are going to apply oil in all the parts that are moving there. The oil is not going to cause any damage to your sewing machine, but it could drop if you apply too much and it will drop onto your work or the fabric you are working with. So the next thing I want to tell you is Never thread your sewing machine with the presser foot down. Always do it when your presser foot is up. And to change the needle plates of your sewing machine, you just need to pull them up. You don't need to unscrew anything or anything like that. These are two different needle plates and this is for a straight stitch and this is for a zigzag stitch. So I want to show you here, the zigzag stitch is a big wide hole for the needle and this one has a tiny hole. So you have to pay attention to the needle plate and the foot you have on your sewing machine. For example, this needle plate here, which is a straight stitch needle plate, and this foot here is to make straight stitches, okay? So the needle is going to go there with precision, like this, like I'm showing with this pin here, like that. Can you imagine what happened if you use a zigzag stitch there? 
You know these machines are strong, so it's not a good combination. You really need to pay attention what you are doing. To change the food, it just you just need to screw that screw there. You get the food out, and this is feed here. Sorry, this food here and that needle plate are for a zigzag stitch. If you are not good with the memory, you don't remember well the things, I recommend to set these two pieces in your sewing machine forever because you can use these two pieces to sew stress stitches and also to sew with zigzag. Okay, so you are going to use these ones too. This pair here has a white gap there and that's the place the needle is going to go through. So the needle has enough space to make zigzag in different sizes. You can use a zigzag foot with a straight stitch needle plate, but you only can sew straight stitches. Never ever a zigzag stitch with a straight stitch needle plate. I think the reasons are obvious and clear. So it's very important. This is very important because many people have accidents. It's quite a bit scary when you break your needle, especially in these heavy duty sewing machines. So I insist a lot of in these silly things, and I hope you can see there that that hole in the needle plate is not designed for a zigzag stitch. It is just amazing how many people think that they have a broken sewing machine because of this. Well, just need to pay attention which parts your sewing machine have in that moment, okay? So let's go and set this needle plate and start sewing a few materials so you can see how the machine works. I'm going to set a zigzag needle plate because I'm the kind of person who has terrible memory and I can forget. So I'm going to set this one and I'm going to set also the zigzag foot. These machines comes with a box full of accessories that you can use them for different purposes. So all of them have to be used with the zigzag needle plate but you can also check the manual to see how to use them. When you change the foot, you need to make sure that this screw here is tight and the foot is in place. I'm going to set the needle position control in the middle of the center and I'm going to set the width of the stitches in zero because I want to make a straight stitch and I'm going to set this part here in two which is the length of my stitches so I'm going to make an average size straight stitch I'm going to set the tension in four as I'm going to use a thin fabric I hope you can see that it's in four and then I'm going to sew And remember that to back a stitch, I need to press that button there, there. So the machine is going to go in reverse and I just leave it. So the machine is going forward again. You control the speed of this machine with the foot pedal. The most you press, the most faster the machine is going to run. It's exactly like in a car, okay? So this is the result. This is a kind of average straight stitch. You can make long stitches as well with this machine. But this is a basic. So I'm going to fold the fabric just to show you that when you are sewing thicker fabrics or you are folding the fabric and you get thicker areas to sew, you need to adjust the tension. So you need to decrease the tension, but in these machines, decreasing is a higher number. For example, you need to go to seven or six in this case. If you were in four in tension, now you're going to go in six. And the machine is going to sew like butter and no problem at all, no knots in the back, anything. So this is the result of that. 
adjusting the tension and this is what you get. I have this thinner material here, it's a kind of cotton and I'm going to again adjust the tension and I'm going to go to four. Why? Because this is a thinner fabric so I'm going to four. Okay, so I start sewing normally. I make sure that all the thread is in the right position. Sometimes when you are sewing, you don't realize that the thread just go out of place in the threading. So you need to put it back in place. Perhaps you cannot see it there because it's so difficult because of the fabric I have, but the stitch is perfect. It's a straight, it's a strong, and I'm going to show you how to sew in denim. I'm going to fold this in one, two, and three. And then I'm going to sew this, just to show you how easy these machines sew thick materials. Then again, I'm going to make a straight stitch, but I need to adjust the tension again because this is thick, so I need to put in it seven or eight. I already did that, it's not in camera, but I did that. And now I'm going ahead and I want to show you something different, it's just how to change the length of the stitches. So you just need to move that part there and adjust it according what you need. If you need a small stitch or you need a long stitch. Change the length of the stitch when the needle is up. I'm going to show you here. So, trying to show you a close up of those stitches. I start with a small stitch or a short stitch, and then I went to three, which is a longer stitch. So, perhaps you can see the difference. I'm not completely sure. I'm going to try to do that with a zigzag stitch. And to do that, I just need to change the setting of the machine. So in this case, I'm going to set the width of the stitch in five. You can set this in four and three. You're going to get after zero, you are going to get six acts, okay, in this machine. So you just set that in five. I leave this in two. You can move it to three or four and you are going to get wider six acts. And I'm going to set my tension in eight. When I'm making six sack stitches, I'm going to have less tension in the machine. So that means that I'm going to go to eight or even nine, seven, eight, nine. So in that way, I'm going to get a perfect zigzag. And if you notice, I'm also going to change or increase the length of my stitches. So I'm going to have a smaller zigzag on the beginning and I'm going to have a wider or a, a big zigzag a bigger zigzag at the end and I'm going to show you how these stitches look just here let me give me some time to make a close-up so I hope you can see here the difference in the size of the zigzag I start for a small zigzag and then it's going to get a little bit bigger to the bottom of this little piece of fabric this is just a very, very small example, and I'm going to show you again in a white piece of fabric, so maybe it looks better, but this fabric is not that thick, so I just wanted to show you in the denim that you will not have problems to sew on denim with this machine, even in leather. This is a better example, or you can see better here, the width of the stitches. And when there is a jump in the stitches because I didn't put the needle up, 
it's just a demonstration so I oh, just forget to do it but if you see here this little jump there is because I didn't put the need the needle up but if you make sure that the needle is up when you change the length of the stitch you are going to be able to increase the length and the zigzag is going to be continued and nice I hope you understand me and this is leather just a small example the leather is different in texture So in leather you see it's exactly the same, this is a straight stitch, it's kind of sewing three, four layers of leather and no problem. So I hope this video helped you to understand your machine. This is an amazing sewing machine, has all the vintage sewing machines. I have more videos coming as soon as possible. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching and happy sewing. Bye.